Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to introduce Zim 6.5.0, which has a thing called audio sprites, which is pretty cool, and also uh, different ways that we can fill. So in this, in this bubbling, we'll take a look at the audio sprite support. Let's go to some code now. Now we're in a Zim fit template and we're using Zim 6.5.0. And just scrolling down here. And what we do in audio sprite is, well, why don't we play the thing? Um, so let's take a look and get an example. Open in browser. In comes the, um, the audio there. And when that comes in, we hit press circles. And now we're playing different um, different sounds from, from that. Cool, huh? So what it is, is it's one audio file, and then we just say where in that audio file our sounds are. It's almost like a, a, an image sprite where we say, where we say which frame we want to go to. And that allows us to have only one audio, um, file downloaded, which can save time or, or calls out there and also some older apps or browsers um, don't support more than a certain number of audio sounds. So uh, that's kind of cool. Let's see how we did it with the code then. This is a Zim format, so a Zim audio sprite format for the data where we say the source and an audio sprite property that is an array of um, our data. So we give each each sound an ID, and we say what time, this is in seconds, does the, the sound begin, and what time does the sound end. And I found that was pretty easy to do if working in Premiere or Edition. Premiere, just watch it because the, um, the, the little numbers way on the right-hand side are actually in frames, uh, say 30 frames or something like that not in milliseconds as one might expect. So I actually made it in Premiere, but brought it into addition to find out when the start time and end times were in uh, decimal seconds. There's also, as it will say here somewhere, let's just see this URL right here. Let's just copy that and open up a browser here and paste. So you can use this tool, which I didn't do, but you could use this tool to drop or specify a bunch of small audio clips and create one big audio clip from it. So this tends to be the tool that that um, uh, libraries are using. CreateJS has cited this tool. Um, Phaser, for instance, for game development, um, uses this tool as well. Now there is a uh, CreateJS also set a place where you can um, parse or uh, convert the format. This this will give you a format here. If we just scroll down, there's an example. There's the example right there. A format something like that where we have resources, a sprite map. Uh, each ID is a, a new property, and then start and end there. There's a way to to turn that into a create Jess sprite audio sprite uh, but let's go through through it here so this is the zim one which i found kind of simple and easy to to put in and therefore you can say frame.load assets and you don't need an array you can just pass in if you've only got one thing you can just pass in that sprite data and load assets will take a look at it and say oh you've got an audio sprite property First of all, it's it's not just a string like it says. You're not asking for an image string or a or a, a sound string. You're look you're looking for an object. There's also you can pass in a font object. So we had to distinguish between a font object which has a source and an audio sprite object which has an audio sprite. Well, a source and an audio sprite. So that's fine. So back down here, this then loads it from the assets folder. And when our file is complete, we can now just start playing those those things. So um, this is frame.assets, and that's one of the IDs. See right here? Start. And it will go and play the sound from this time to that time. 
cool, huh? Now, we also made a bunch of circles, we animated them in, and we made it so that when you click on the circles, uh, a mouse down on the, the circles, what we did is we shuffled our audio sprite array, and we picked one of our elements so that shuffles this array right here. It picks one of the elements. Well, actually, it'll pick once it shuffles it, it picks the first element, because, you know, if it's shuffled, the first one's just as good as any <laughs> for a random one. And then we ask for the first index of the shuffled array, that being black ball. So this grabs one of the random elements, and then this grabs the ID from that. So our random sound is basically that ID. Uh, we've set the sound name.txt to that random sound, and I don't know if you recall seeing, but when we run this thing here uh, and press, you see down here that's the text, and when we press it says power up. Well, that came from the ID, and this one, submit. Isn't that neat how it, it animates longer mm. for big ones and shorter for um, small ones? So uh, that's slow. That's the text, that's the label down here. Right here, our uh, sound name, right there. Then we play the sound. So that's great. It's just like playing a sound. We, we're just playing the random sound ID, uh, basically. So it's just the same, exactly the same as loading in a single sound, except you load in the data for all those different sounds, which is nice. Now in behind the scene, there's some, uh, some other things here that we can look at. If we're wanting to load other assets, then it would just look like this. You know, just like before, instead of saying a sound there, you're just putting this object here. You can put that object right in there if you want, but uh, it makes it look a little bit messy. So we've stored it in a variable and we pass that in as one of the assets. And some other JPEG, you could then also pass in another MP3 or a font or a JSON file at the same time from assets. Okay, so it just works like an, any other asset. You can also, if you want, here we are, we've jumped to Zimduo technique of saying the assets will be just that one. The path is assets and output audio sprite true. Uh, when we set that to true, let's do that. So we swap that over and I refresh here and I go 12. Uh, what happens is it outputs to the console this file right here, which is in a slightly different format. Okay, so it's taken the Zim audio sprite format and converted it to a CreateJS audio format, which looks like this. So um, I've uncommented the loading of the Zim audio format audio sprite format. I've now made a create JS sprite data from just copying that. So I copied what was in the console there and I've added uh, single quotes around it because for some reason it's kind of unfortunate when you when you output to the console uh, JSON file. I wonder if I could output a JSON file and just add those quotes. Uh, I'll take a look at that. But anyway, um, this is JSON and what we need to do is parse that JSON format and then we can pass that format if we want. This is a create JS audio sprite data into the file and should work as well. So we refresh here and it comes and there we go. Now um, why would you do that? Uh, well, you don't have to. First of all, you may have already some an audio sprite from a, with a CreateJS format, or be given one or something. Not only that, but when we load the assets, we convert the Zim format into this. So you might save a millisecond <laughs> of coding, <laughs> for instance, if you were to pre pre do that. You see, so if uh, if you do this and and grab you know a different version of this. When you put this version in there, it's the um, it's the version that will actually get sent through to CreateJS to actually load these assets. But uh, you know, like I said, I wouldn't bother. It's just a millisecond of time, perhaps. So 
string it in like that. Okay. Um, there is a way to uh, convert from that one file that, that I showed you. You can convert. CreateJS had somebody in their community create a converter. And, and that's here, and you would paste in the data that comes from that tool that you can make to make these audio sprites. That is if you don't hand make them yourself. I mean, it took me five minutes, maybe 10 minutes at most, to um, create an audio sprite just, just in the tools I have. But uh, maybe you don't have the Adobe tool, so you could come here. And then you get an output, and the output would look like this. Let me grab it for us. Audio sprite assets. And uh, here it is. No, no, that's the sound itself. Cool. Um, JSON file. There we go. So this is our data as if it were exported by that that tool. And you can see it's in just a slightly different format. So what we can do is we can parse that format. So here, here's what that would look like. This is a, another file. If I just open this up, open in browser, there we go. In it comes again. So what we're doing in this case is we're loading that JSON file. Uh, true, oh, I was just testing something. I don't need that. We're loading that JSON file. I had a bug actually, and it was confusing me. And what I had done is I said, load the audio sprite.json. This worked locally because locally the server didn't care if it was uppercase or lowercase. But as soon as I put it up on the server, it didn't work. And I was going, what's going on? And this parameter is XHR, which is a format of loading. And I was testing that. But it turned out it was just the fact that that was lowercase. So if anything ever works locally for you when it comes to files and stuff, it works locally but doesn't work on a server, you might want to check your case on your file name. So when we're complete, we've loaded in that data, that JSON data. When we're complete, we're calling the init function, or we could just put this all in a in a um, object or in a, a function literal or anonymous function there. But I wanted to make sure that you see this thing right there. That's the fourth parameter set to true, so that this complete will only run once. If you didn't have that, because we're loading two, two different times, we're loading our JSON file in, and next we're loading the data from that JSON file um, to actually get the image. If we, if we just did this like that, like normal, what would happen is this would load, then this would run, and when these assets load, this frame dot on complete will will run, but also this frame dot on complete will also run, which would then load this again, and you'd be stuck in this loading loop. So um, there's a couple ways around that. We've discussed it a few times, but one way is to just make sure that hey, if you're going to load this, you want that complete event, that init, to only run once. Then just that's the easiest way. You could also assign these to different variables and put the complete event on those different variables. It's called a zim queue. Anyway, once we load in the JSON file, we're then going to use zim.parse audio sprite. Except we don't need the namespace anymore. So parse audio sprite is new. And what that does is it will take in our audio sprite JSON file. So what happens here is when we go frame.asset, it turns the JSON file into an H or into a, J a JavaScript object. So that object is being passed into parse audio sprite, and what comes out of that is a create.js audio sprite data. So uh, yeah, there you go. So now we can take that audio sprite data and we can pass it into the load assets along with an image that we've that we're also collecting for this feature. They're both coming from the assets folder. When we're complete, we've got the sounds to play again. So we're just playing one there. If we wanted to change another, we could say wall end. I think that was one of them. 
And now if we view this or we'll refresh, I think I've got it open. Here it is. And there we go. Now the image is kind of neat. Um, but we'll see more of that in the next bubbling. There's the circle being brought in and we're centering it on the stage. And we're also um, using a color command that's new, uh, but we'll see that in the next bubbling and uh, passing in a bitmap as a fill for that. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, and that's what's bubbling at Zim, a new audio sprite functionality. Now this is all piggybacking on the CreateJS audio sprite, but just slightly modifying the format here and having it so that all of this can be done through the uh, frame.load assets. Um, I hadn't used an audio sprite before, uh, but I certainly will now. This this was a lot of fun to be able to do that. And often when you have little games and stuff, you've got a bunch of little sounds. And uh, I think this is a pretty neat way of doing it. Okay, uh, ciao. That's it for What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, Zim at ZimJS.com. Uh, as you probably know, is an open source framework for making interactive works on a canvas using JavaScript and CreateJS. Have a great day. Ciao.